Okay, hi everyone. This is Michelle Tabarish from michelletabarish.com and themindfulartist.com. And I'm super excited. I have a great guest today with us from Hatch Fund. So Hatch Fund is uh, crowdfunding specifically for artists. And I, that's why I really wanted to speak to them. They actually reached out to me and I had a really great chat with Stephanie, who we're going to speak to today. And she explained to me how it works. And I said, gee, you know, I have this community on YouTube and I really feel like they should know about this option. So she graciously agreed to sit down with me and talk to you guys about this resource for you. And we're going to go in detail and we'll put links below to their website so that you can research this um, further on your own. But I, you know, my, my aim is to support other artists in realizing their goals as artists. And I think a lot of times, you know, just money from all the artists I know, money is always an issue. And I feel like some people sort of clamp down on their dreams because they're not even have no idea how they could have the funding to make some kind of larger project realizable. So um, we're going to go into detail about what projects would work for Hatch Fund um, fundraising um, and what projects are successful and how they can help you. So I'm going to introduce Stephanie Campos. Um, and Stephanie, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this and what's your background and um, what's important to you about what you do? Of course. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. It's a pleasure. Um, yeah, so I've been a project manager here at Hatch Fund for almost two years now. Um, we're a very small nonprofit organization of just three. Uh, we are expanding soon to four, so we're very excited about that. And Hatch Fund, we used to be USA Projects. Um, it was pretty well known. And USA Projects was launched in 2010 as a project of United States Artists, a fellowship program that still exists today. And they did recently relocate to Chicago. So in um, October of 2013, uh, USA Projects was acquired by AIM Institute. Uh, that's our current parent organization. So they rebranded us as Hatch Fund. So it's kind of a little bit of backstory about Hatch Fund and and myself, you know, I love the arts. Um, I love working for nonprofits. That's kind of where I come in, uh, working in the nonprofit sector. I'm currently getting a master's in public administration, so I have a deep passion for helping others. Mm -hmm. Nice. So um, let's just jump in and, and explain. L let's like start at the beginning. Like, what is crowdfunding? You know, some people, I most people have heard of it by now, but let's just. Explain. Also, I think before we get into that, I just want to say I have an international audience on YouTube, and so it probably should be helpful right at the start to clarify: is is this just for U.S. artists, or it is? So okay. currently, Hatch Fund um, is just for United States citizens or permanent residents. Okay. Okay. So um, let's go into what is you know what is crowdfunding? How does it work? you know, and, and you can kind of talk about some of the other crowdfunding sources and, and I would definitely, we're going to get into what makes you guys different. Yeah. So crowdfunding is basically someone looking to raise funds for something. Uh, and typically they go online and they reach out to everybody they know via social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook is what we see used most common. And, uh, send out e-blasts, personal emails to people, meet up with people, call people, basically fundraising mm -hmm. to get to a set goal. Um, people are directed to their project page online and raise funds to get to whatever they're looking to raise. So it's a very general overview of crowdfunding. It's typically 30 to 45 days and every website has different platforms. I'm sure people have heard of Kickstarter. That's a big one. It's been around for, for longer. Indiegogo is another one. GoFundMe. Uh, there's, there's a lot out there. And there's more and more um, by the day that are increasing. So that's kind of an overview of what crowdfunding is. It's people utilizing an online platform to raise funds to be able to do a project, really bringing together everyone that they know, those personal asks and um, requests for uh, contributions. Mm -hmm. And would you say when, when projects with Hatch Fund get funded, 
how what percentage is directly from that person's like um, immediate circle and how much is expanded by being on social media by someone sharing it and like a friend of a friend or maybe even a complete stranger do you have a sense of that statistic yeah so typically for crowdfunding in general about 85 percent or more of donations come from the person's own network that launches the campaign Mm -hmm. so obviously that personalization and your own network is a huge factor in determining how successful your campaign is going to be. So just that alone really makes you realize I have to have a network and I have to understand, you know, what it takes to be successful before launching a campaign. And that's how we're really different. Yeah. Uh, Just to throw a couple stats out there. um, We currently have a 78% success rate, which is the highest that we know of in the crowdfunding world. Mm -hmm. Um, Kickstarter has a 43 percent success rate and Indiegogo has a 9.8. So um, their platforms are a little bit different. Um, With those other websites, um, what you put as your goal, as your deadline, uh, that's set in stone. There's no flexibility there. You don't have anyone to talk to directly, not much support. Mm -hmm. So um, that's really what sets Hatch Fund apart. Mm -hmm. We personalize um, our correspondence with our artists. Every single project on our site has a project manager dedicated to the campaign and goes over everything that the artist needs to know to be successful prior to launch. We won't okay. launch a campaign until we've gone over every detail of our platform with them. And then we basically act as fundraising coaches once the campaign is live and throughout the whole process. So tell me how much contact would that look like for the average artist? You know, say I just started my project yesterday. Are you emailing me? Like... Or or do I reach out to you or, or do you have like a calendar and you make sure you check in with people at certain intervals or what? So we, we reach out to you. If there's a draft that has started, mm-hmm. um, it takes a couple days, but it will be assigned a project manager. Mm-hmm. And we will reach out to you within a matter of days and just go over next steps. When are you hoping to launch? Let's talk about your project. Let's go over the platform. Make sure you understand, you know, what we're here to do mm-hmm. and get you ready for a a launch date. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so then during the launch, it, once the project is in motion, do they, do you check in with artists and Absolutely. say Absolutely. Like, we want to make sure they're on target to be successful. Okay. Um, we've never had a campaign fail that can reach 25% of its goal in the first week. So that's wow. always something you want to strive wow. for. Okay. Obviously, if you don't make it there, that doesn't mean you're going to fail. That's right. just a really great number to shoot for. Um, okay. So, um, you know, some artists do need a little bit more hand-holding than others, and we're happy to do that. We just want to make sure that they are, uh, you know, positive, that they're, they're willing to be out there. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of our artists, you know, they're, they're all so different. Some are a little bit more shy. Mm-hmm. Some are very outgoing and have no problem emailing people every day. Mm-hmm. Others, um, you, know, they, you know, they need a little bit of an extra push, and that's where we come in. So yeah. uh, we provide templates. You can just use the language you provide that's really effective and compelling to reach mm-hmm. out to people. We try to make them comfortable. Obviously, if it's not for them, it's not for them. But we let them know, you know, pretty much 99% of the artists we speak with are shy and are scared. It's, it's, uh, they feel vulnerable. They're going to put themselves out there and they want to, you know, make sure that they're comfortable. So mm-hmm. we do everything we can to, to get them on board and have them funded. So what about people, um, besides being, you know, shy, a lot of artists are tend to be kind of more on the introverted side, so that I get, but some could be introverted and okay about asking people for money, and some could be introverted or extroverted and not comfortable at all about asking for money. Now, do you, would that artist even have a chance of doing a project like this, or would you just say maybe well, that's not the best fit? Or Well, what, if what an artist... T- flat out tells me I refuse to reach out to my contacts and I would say you know maybe now is not the best time but if Mm -hmm. you change your mind in the future you know it's an open invitation and Mm -hmm. I always recommend um, try to build up your social media presence Mm -hmm. maybe add more people to your mailing list Mm -hmm. and a few months out maybe you'll have a different perspective on it okay and you'll have more contacts have you seen anyone have kind of a turnaround in their mindset around that where at first they were uncomfortable and then they saw some value somehow in what they were doing for the other people? Because I think that's a lot, you know, sometimes when people go out, it's like it's, they don't want to feel like they're begging, you know, they want to feel like there's this mutual exchange or something. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So from my experience, a lot of artists, especially first time artists that have never done this before, 
um, you know, I work with them to make sure their drafts are really compelling and they know how to present it in a way that makes people want to contribute. Mm -hmm. So more often than not, people are going to be support. The artists will be supported. They're going to get really great feedback from everyone around them. And they're just overwhelmed by the amount of support they receive. Uh, And it makes them more comfortable just reaching out to more people and tapping into those extended networks. mm -hmm. So, and that's always amazing to see. And it it happens more often than not. People just don't realize, like, I can't believe I have this support circle around me. Yeah. Now, does everyone need to have a video as part of their project page? Is that an important part of it? Yes, absolutely. We do require about a one to three minute pitch video to be uploaded prior to launch. Okay. So um, there's so many different ways. We want the artists to execute it how they see fit. You're not required to be in front of the camera if you don't want to be. We have really great videos that have some scrolling uh, imagery with voiceover. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever works for them, we always just recommend making sure you convey the information, what the project is about, um, and have a clear ask. People will not donate if you don't ask. Right. People forget to ask. Yeah. It's really that simple. <laughs> Make sure you have an ask in your video. Please support my project. It's very important and crucial to always have a clear ask in all of your uh, social media posts and your emails, your correspondence, and things like that. Do you review these videos then before they go up and give feedback? Like, have you caught that before? It's like, oh, you forgot to ask for money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we're not going to make them edit it. In mm-hmm. the description, we review all of this before they launch. Okay. Uh, it should be about three to four paragraphs of project description where you introduce your project, maybe mm-hmm. provide some history, uh, background information, how you're going to execute it, and then get into, like, I need to raise you know, $5,000 to be able to do this project. and. This is what I'm going to be doing with the donations. And then at the end, make sure you have a clear ask. That's an easy fix. Um, videos aren't always an easy fix. So if, if it's not in there, we make sure at least it's in the project description. And um, I know in Kickstarter, they have you know different things that you get at different levels of donation, like little, I don't know what they call them, gifts or something. Or yeah. what, what, How do you guys handle that? What? Yeah, so Kickstarter calls them rewards. We call them perks. They're basically mm-hmm. incentives you offer to get people to contribute to your project. For example, you know, if you donate $20 to my campaign, you can select a postcard sent to you directly from the artist. Mm-hmm. Um, so we always recommend having maybe four to five different perk levels. Uh, they could be something relating to the project or past artwork. Even art that a friend wants to donate, you can offer it as a perk. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. So what kind of what kind of artists is this a fit for? I mean, do we have is it all visual artists on Hatch Fund or um, I know you have filmmakers, choreographers? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's important to note um, before, like I said, only uh, U.S. citizens or permanent residents can launch at this time. Artists also have to be 18 years of age or older. Mm-hmm. So and they have to qualify. So you do have to enroll, mm-hmm. and once you're approved, you can begin a draft. Okay. So we support artists in all disciplines, um, filmmakers, musicians, visual artists, um, even architectural type artists. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the requirements, basically, as, lo- as long as they meet any of the following, um, you would be approved on Hatch Fund. Uh, they would have to show that they are a student, alumni, or faculty member of an accredited for your art institution, mm-hmm. or if they've been nationally recognized for their work in some way or received a grant. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're a full-time practicing artist and have a body of work to show us that, um, you know, or maybe they're affiliated with one of, one of our uh, partner organizations. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And those were listed on your website. So we'll put a link mm-hmm. to that below. Um, so what else? I wanted to kind of get a sense of which projects have been, like, what makes a project successful on Hatch Fund? Besides, I mean, you did say about, you know, you really have to, um, have a network and be able to reach out to them. But is there anything about the types of projects that get more funded? Do you have a sense of that? Or is it really kind of all over the place Um, with different types? It's a little bit of all over. We see a little bit of everything. I'm Mm -hmm. not going to lie. But Mm -hmm. honestly, I really think if your project is compelling, you want it to be compelling. You know, Mm -hmm. you want to be able to answer that question of why should we donate our hard earned money to your project. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure you answer and address these things in your project description. Um, So projects that maybe have community outreach, Mm -hmm. you know, those, those tend to do really well. Um, Projects that maybe they have somewhere where the art is going to be exhibited, there's an end point to them. Okay, projects like that tend to do really well on the site. And it should be mentioned, we haven't talked about yes, you guys are a non profit. So what I understand is if someone donates 
that's all tax deductible. It's 100% tax deductible for them, which isn't the case on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, I believe. Is that, do I have that right? That is correct. So we are a nonprofit 501c3 organization. So when people make a donation, it is completely tax deductible. Um, we can get into the nitty gritty now of the platform. So yeah. it, it's free for artists. So that's another huge advantage. Uh, mm -hmm. Our platform is 100% free for artists. We don't charge our artists anything to launch a campaign. We don't take a cut of what they fundraise. We have it set up so the donors cover those costs. So when someone makes a donation, they also need to make a minimum of 10% donation to Hatch Fund. Okay. So if they want to give $100 to the project, for example, they will be charged about $110 altogether and get the tax deductible receipt for the full amount they are charged. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I could see that would be really a plus for a lot of people who want to donate and who have already um, an amount of their income set aside for charitable contributions. And it's hard harder in some ways to donate to an individual artist that way you can donate to an organization usually but it's it's pretty rare that you'd be able to like fund a specific artist and have it be tax deductible so that's exactly that's a big plus exactly. usually think. they have to go through a fiscal sponsor or add in a middleman mm -hmm. and um, because of that donations tend to be larger on on hatch fund mm -hmm. than say indiegogo or kickstarter Oh, interesting. Is there do you have any figures on that? Like when Yeah. So the average donation is $124. Wow. And on other sites it's about roughly like $25. Ah, oh, that's a big huge difference. So I guess what I'm hearing is is like if you can reach out to your community, you don't even have to have that huge a community. You just you know because they're the donation level is going to be higher. I mean, if you have to work really hard to get $10 and you have to do that hundreds of times versus you know, the same amount of effort to get one donation of $100. I guess it might work in favor of the artists in that regard. Absolutely. We definitely think so. Yeah. Um, but also, I do want to note that because we offer tax deductibility to donors legally, we're not allowed to offer refunds. Uh huh. Um, illegal yes. for us to give back funds if someone's already gotten a tax write off for it. Got it. Okay. So um, that's very different from mm -hmm. uh, the other other platforms that are out there. Mm -hmm. So um, while we say we have an all or nothing platform similar to Kickstarter, we are flexible. So if an artist needs to raise five thousand dollars to do their project and say their deadline is coming up and they're not quite there, we're happy to offer them an extension. We'll give you another week, two weeks, whatever you need to get to your goal. 90 days is the cap on the site, mm -hmm. which is a very long time to be crowdfunding. So if we've extended that out and you only were able to get to like $4,000 out of your $5,000 target goal, mm -hmm. we're not going to let you fail. Uh, we can definitely work with you. And, and if you can still find a way to do your project with a little bit less, we'll let you keep the funds. Okay. Okay, so, so you guys, it sounds like you really very determined to get the artist the money they need. <laughs> so you set these kind of parameters, but then if it has to kind of flex in some way, you sort of work with the individual. Yeah. Does that make sense? Am I capturing That's exactly that? right. We okay. definitely are willing to explore all options before we ever let a campaign fail. You know, it's in our mission to make mm -hmm. sure we give artists funding for their projects. Yeah. So... Um, so now people are always wondering, okay, well, but what if it does fail? What happens with that? So um, we thought the most equitable thing to do with a campaign that does fail those funds, and typically they're between zero to two percent of the goal. Mm. So those funds, uh, maybe it's like fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. They um, don't go back to the donor, and they don't go to the artist. They roll over into an a match fund we have set up. Oh, so basically, it's okay. like it's like a pool mm -hmm. um, of funds. Uh, so once a month, we activate this match fund, meaning that artists that are eligible for a little bit of extra free cash can get dollar for dollar donations. Mm -hmm. So on the 25th of every month, um, starting right at 9 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern, um, all projects between 25 and 100% of the target goal are eligible to receive dollar for dollar matching funds up to $225 in total or once it's been exhausted. It is pretty competitive. We don't have a lot of projects that fail, but yeah. whatever we have there, you know, we give it right back and mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a great incentive for artists to let their networks know, you know, get me to 25% of my goal by this date and then on this date, you know, donate so I can get matching funds. So it's it's really effective either way, even so if you don't get all of that. So it's that one date that the matching funds go into effect for those. Yeah, it's like a one once a month for that one day. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. <laughs> that um, is the part I get asked a lot about. So yeah. We just try to 
very clear for artists about the parameters. Um, we send emails out mm-hmm. so you're exactly aware of your status, if you're eligible, and all of that information. Got it. And I, I think because I've heard of matching funds a lot in the you know nonprofit world, um, it, it's uh, it's usually like an extended. You get a letter, and they're like, "Oh, we've had you know a ten thousand dollar you know matching fund. Like if we can." Well, every dollar you donate will be doubled by this donor or something, and that motivates people. But you have a longer period of time. But I think what makes this different is is that one day that you have to like get it out to the community. If you donate to me today, then that will be doubled or something or matched, right? It's mm-hmm. it'll be doubled, yeah, it's a great strategy. I yeah. had an artist. Um, you know, we had one this past January twenty fifth, mm-hmm. not too long ago. We had our match fund special. One artist was maybe over a thousand dollars away from her target goal, mm-hmm. and I saw just donations rolling in that day because she put an email e blast out there saying yeah. my donations are doubled. She got she got way past her target goal just oh, because of great. the matching funds. That's really great. Yeah, because so, it's you know the thing works. is is when people are giving charitably, they don't have any deadline on that, right? For the most part. So it's like if you have that one day you know your money's gonna make that much more of a difference, that's the time you're gonna like whip out your credit card and say, Okay, today I've been meaning to do this. Today I'm gonna send her some money. So yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. cool. I like so, that. It's a great strategy. And apart from this, so we have this match fund that I just explained. And the, we have another match fund. We have the functionality of setting up. So that's kind of another advantage with Hatch Fund. So if you have, an artist has a large level potential donor, maybe someone looking to donate even $400 or more, mm-hmm. we can take that donation and set it aside and create a match fund specifically for that project alone. Oh, cool. So it incentivizes their donors to yeah. donate now. Mm-hmm. instead of later because now is when the matching funds are active mm-hmm. and it makes people want to donate maybe a little bit more than they would have otherwise. Yeah. So, so yes. that's something we um we have the functionality of doing it and we always I always recommend, you know, if you have the opportunity, let me set up a match fund for you because we have a 100% success rate with them. Wow. That's exciting. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> they work. They're yeah. very effective. Yeah. So, um what, another thing I read on your website, which I'd love for you to talk about what this looks like for the artist, it says it'll take 30 to 45 days of hard work. So how much time should an artist, let's just say, you know, looking especially at the campaigns that are really successful, um, maybe an average. I mean, there's some people who maybe don't have another job. You know, most artists have a job. They're raising money because they don't have enough money. So, um, right. Maybe there's some people who aren't working full time and, and can put in like a 40 hour work week fundraising for 30 days or whatever. But let's just say your average artist, what does that hard work look like? What should they be, you know, up for expecting to put what kind of time should they need to put in? You know, what what kind of things should they be expecting to do during those 30, 45 days of their funding? Yeah, so it obviously varies. The higher the goal the more time and effort you're going to put into it. But I always recommend launching your campaign when your schedule is pretty open for that month or six weeks Mm -hmm. and putting in maybe an hour, give or take Mm -hmm. every day. Okay. Something along those lines. It doesn't have to be eight hours a day. Okay. Okay. But I will tell you, I had an artist last year raise over $30,000 in 30 days and it was her full-time job. She did put 40 hours a week into it (laughs) pretty much for that one month. Um, Yeah. And then I schedule fundraising calls on pretty much on a weekly basis with my artists. I Mm -hmm. always ask them to send me email drafts. I always love providing feedback and just making sure I know when they're sending that out so I can gauge the response and donations coming in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these things I'm always happy to work on Mm -hmm. Um, with our artists. We provide really great imagery that they should be using for social media posts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, compiling, creating all this content, mm-hmm. that is time consuming. Yeah. Um, you want to thank every donor. That's something we highly recommend doing is mm-hmm. thanking every donor. Maybe a thank you personalized tweet or Facebook post, things like that. It, it really goes a long way. Yes. Um, what I keep hearing you say is emails. And so I think it should be stated like how, you know, not every artist even has an email contact list already in place. I mean, many artists do and they email to them regularly about shows or announcements, but it sounds like your successful artists are raising a lot of funds through their email community. Is that right? Yes. Email is very important. And I understand a lot of artists don't have MailChimp or constant contact or an emailing system Mm -hmm. like that. Um, If they do, I highly recommend using it. Um, if they don't, they, they can BCC and send out 
an email blast that way mm-hmm. so people, other people won't see. Um, but apart from e-blasts, you know, general type emails about the campaign, having a list of like 10 to 15 people you can personally email is really what makes a big difference. Okay. You really want to personalize your correspondence with people. Mm-hmm. That That's what brings in donations. Social media is a really great way to just let people know my campaign is going. I'm at 50% now. Provide updates, provide imagery, mm-hmm. links to the campaign. But really... Those, those personal touches is what goes a long way. Yeah, so when people do have a list, like how big are their email lists generally that they're emailing to? Would you say what's an average size, you know, that someone is ending up meeting their goal, you know, like amount of people that they're reaching out to ah. through email? Because, you know, I think Facebook and, and that is another whole thing because that can go viral, but like email is generally people who already have a really strong personal connection to you. They've given you their email. They've given you permission to email them. So that feels maybe to me, and you might correct me on this, a little different than doing it on social media, which can also be beneficial. But I'm just kind of curious about that. Like, yeah, it is It is a little different. So the average mailing list is probably a good f- close to 50 contacts mm-hmm. that you can email. Um, I've had artists have 1,200, 2,000 more on mm-hmm. their mailing list. And mm-hmm. I've had artists just target 20 people and been successful. Wow. So so it really, you know, you really have to think about your network and the type of individuals before you launch. Mm-hmm. I had, we had an artist recently raise over $40,000 that didn't even have a Facebook. Wow. So you don't think that I don't have a Facebook. I don't have 10,000 followers. I'm going to fail. That's not the case at all. Sure. It's really acknowledging your network and thinking about it. Yeah. And understanding it. Yeah. So I guess people shouldn't be discouraged if they don't have an email list is what I'm Not hearing. at it's all. It's like it's just start <laughs> anywhere. Whatever you have can definitely um, be an important source of, yeah. of getting money for your project. And that's something we're happy to talk to because mm-hmm. obviously each artist has a different network. Mm-hmm. So I, we will have that conversation with our artists. Like, what does your network look like? Let's talk about that because mm-hmm. you want to be strategic mm-hmm. and increase your chance for success. Yeah. Now, what about, um, I'm sure we've always all been on the other end of someone who feels like, it feels like we're kind of getting hammered over the head with requests for money. So how do, how do you coach people to navigate that where you don't wear out your list and wear out your community with too many appeals? Um, it still feels like fun and um, exciting and it doesn't feel like oh my god please stop asking me you know like I don't I gave to you last time or whatever right. it is you know how do you how do you help people not wear out their list and and end up turning people off from their campaign yeah so there's a few things to remember I mean this is why they should be 30 to 45 days right the mm-hmm. campaign mm-hmm. you don't want to be emailing people for for 90 days straight yeah and we don't recommend emailing people um you know, every day at all. We mm-hmm. recommend sending out an e-blast maybe like once a week, mm-hmm. once, maybe even twice a week, once it gets closer to the final week. Okay. Personalizing the emails and sending out personal emails, you shouldn't do it as often as e-blasts and mm-hmm. you should really kind of gauge responses. Mm-hmm. Uh, if someone says they're going to donate, follow up with them in a few days, you know, don't badger them every single day, you know, give them a few days to donate. People have lives, they're Mm -hmm. busy, Mm -hmm. but definitely keep a list of people that said they're going to contribute, but haven't. That happens in every campaign. Okay. Um, Another thing is in terms of Facebook, it's, that's why it's so great to utilize social media because when you put something on, on social media, you're not putting in someone's inbox. You're kind of just putting it out there for people to see. Mm -hmm. So this is why you should be posting, you know, multiple times throughout the week on social media and always keep the language fresh. You don't want to sound like a broken record. You don't Mm -hmm. want to sound repetitive. Maybe talk about a particular perk. Mm -hmm. Maybe talk about, you know, what percentage you're at. Maybe mention something just in general about the project. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to always change your content. Uh, I had one artist in her e-blast put like a little disclaimer at the bottom you know thank you so much for everyone bearing with me I promise as soon as my campaign wraps up I'm going to continue emailing you once a month Mm -hmm. for my monthly newsletter so I thought that was really sweet and it made people you know like they understand you know you're putting yourself out there Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully they'll be understanding to that and and know that you know you are emailing them and and I'm aware of that but it's not going to be forever yeah only until I get my funds yeah yeah and people get that they know what a campaign is yeah um Gosh, I think we've covered all the points I was interested in um, in covering. Is there anything else, Stephanie, that we haven't touched on that you feel like is important to 
to get across to people and share with people about this? We ha we've pretty much hit all of the main points mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure we did. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess maybe just if you have any questions, give us a call. We'll be here. There's going to be someone that answers the phone. Oh, nice. You wow. have a live person that you can talk to. If you have yeah. any questions, concerns, you know, we want to, we're here to answer them for you. Okay. Do you want to just say the phone number and the website? We'll also post it below, but just so that people who might be listening and not looking at the screen. <laughs> so the website is www.hatchfund.org. That's H-A-T-C-H-F-U-N-D.org. And the phone number is 877-893-0587. Uh, disclaimer, we are in Southern California, so <laughs> we're on Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> so keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think what I'd like to do um, to wrap it up, I'm going to give the artists who are watching and who are interested in this two options for little action steps they can take because I just... I think this is such a great opportunity. And one thing I think might be fun for people to do is go on your site and look at the projects that are already there, projects that artists are looking for funding right now. And you may even be inspired to donate a little something to a project that inspires you that you might not know personally the artist, but I believe what comes around goes around. And every time we support each other, we lift each other collectively. So um, that could be one way to sort of touch in on Hatch Fund. And another thing is to maybe, if you were right now someone to say, what project do you need funded? Sit down and just write a few sentences like, do you have an idea? And, um, you know, what I'm getting from our conversation is it's really important to have a really clearly thought out plan. And I think sometimes people get overwhelmed. They don't even know where to start. But it just starts by writing a few sentences out and starting to really think and letting it germinate and build. And, um, you know, it sounds like they can reach out to you and get help too on developing an idea further if it's not quite ready to be hatched, so to speak. <laughs> you know, how Absolutely. To, no, how we, get, we have those talks all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's so wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's such a beautiful resource and the fact that you guys actually talk to people and answer the phone and you don't charge anything to artists, I feel like it's such a, a gift to the artist community. So I'm really glad we could sit down and have this chat and, and let people know. Um, let people know more about what you do. It's really wonderful. Yes, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you. Likewise. Thank you so much, Stephanie. You're very welcome.